emotional abuse in relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? My name is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, I want to cover these particular, is, is eight topics that I'm going to cover. But I want you to understand, if you're in a relationship where these things are going on, Hopefully you have a safe relationship where you could come in and have a conversation which chances are pretty good. It's not that environment if you fit these eight that I'm about to talk about, but hopefully you do. And if you don't, you guys can get to that place where we can have open dialogue and actually communicate. If you can't do that, then you need to go get that outside help if you guys aren't willing to do it between the two of you. And if you have a partner that's not willing to go to outside help and get that, then you may have to look at exiting. I'm, I'm a person, a firm believer in marriage. I don't push divorce. I don't try to tell people you should. That to me is kind of like the last option if you just can't get it done. But I will never, ever tell anyone to stay in a relationship where they've been mentally or physically abused. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about here, these eight emotionals. And uh, one of them is shame, which I talked about on uh, Monday, on Self Love Monday. Shaming yourself is what I was talking about there. But the same thing, if you're in a relationship where a person is shaming you, they're looking at you and, and they're comparing, which is where this stuff usually comes from. But they're looking at you and saying, look at your body, look at your, um, your hair, look at your, uh, your stomach, look at whatever. And they're shaming you. And they tell you, no, I'm just doing this because I'm trying to inspire you. Well, again, as you guys have heard me say before, some people, negativity does inspire them to get help. The only problem with that and what I've seen is negativity can get a person to move in some instances and get the result that you guys were looking for. The only problem is because they did it from a negative perspective, they'll never be happy because, let's say, use for example, your weight. Let's say you're at 150, just throwing a number out there. And your goal is you guys talk, your partners talk bad about you, shamed you. 130, it's where you need to get because 150, you're fat. That's what they're telling you. So you get to 130, the goal you guys were shooting for, you should be ecstatic. Guess what happened? It's not going to happen because you're doing it one for the wrong reason. And because of the fact that now the programming you had to go through from a negative perspective, you're going to always have that plan in your mind. So even when you get to 130, guess what? You're going to still look at yourself and be like, well, I'm too fat. Why? Because you're doing it based on shaming. Wrong reason to do it. You guys have heard me say before, if you're going out to lose weight or something, do it because it's for your health reasons. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's got to be something that inspires you and then you'll do it. But if you're doing it because it's been pushed by a negative impulse, you'll never get there and be happy because once you get there, you're going to sit. I remember uh, the example. Oh, I shouldn't get into that. But anyway, um, I remember hearing uh, Tony Robbins talk about uh, he was at an event and he asked the guy, what does it take to equal success? And the guy said, if you're making $10 million a year, and here's a guy that's making like $3 million a year, but 10 million is, is, is the number. And then he asked another lady in the audience and she said, every morning I wake up, my feet hit the ground. It's a success. So he said, see how she set herself up to succeed every day. When she just wake up, her feet hit the floor. She's just, so she's just setting herself up to succeed. The guy, think about the other guy who's trying to inspire himself, again, using the negative. He's only half three million, but he's got to get to 10. You guys understand, before he had the three million, I guarantee you his dream was if one day I could get to a million. And after he got to a million, it was when I get to three. And after he got to three, when I get to 10. Why? He's being moved by the wrong thing. Therefore, he will never, ever get to a point where he could be happy unless he changes his perspective, which is, you guys know, that's everything that I always talk about. But anyway, let's move on. Shame, you guys know. We know why people are doing it. If not, go back to my other video. But 
if you're in a relationship where a person is shaming you, we need to have a conversation or we need to go get help or I'm out of here. People will use controlling behavior. This one is, is kind of, uh, I know some guys aren't going to want to hear this, but this one to me is kind of where I've said before, when I hear about the masculine energy and being the man of the house, this is where that kind of comes into play to me, the controlling behavior. Uh, again, most of the guys that I hear use it, now, I'm not saying all, because all is always a bad word, <laughs> but most of the guys that I hear talking this masculine men, they're talking about controlling behavior. In other words, I tell you what to do. Why? Because I'm the man. You guys have heard me say that before. She ain't a child. She's not yours to raise. But anyway, if you're in a relationship where a guy is trying to control your behavior or a woman, because, folks, everything, like I've said before, works both ways. But anytime somebody's trying to have controlling behavior by bullying, by threatening, by trying to intimidate, which is actually one of the, the other ones I was going to talk about, which is threats. If they're using any of this kind of stuff, get help. Either Because probably if they're this type of personality, you guys are probably not really uh, have that safe environment. So you might have to go to the outside. And like I said before, if they're not willing to go get the outside, I'm never ever going to tell you to stay in a relationship with that kind of behavior. Again, I know for some guys, this is kind of their, their, uh, what they believe the man thing is, is being able to control as they call it your household. And you hear guys say that I run my house. And they'll say it just like, I run my house with like an authority, a bully, a, an, an, an intimidator. And that's why I always shake my head when I hear when I hear that, because I'm like, that's not that's not what it's all about. To me, the man of the house, if you want to call it that, or a leader, to me, it's the same thing. A leader just means people voluntarily follow you because of the direction in which you're going. You guys hear what I just said? A leader just goes. But because of the things that you're doing, people want to follow. That's what makes you a leader. Again, I've talked about that when people try to use that on me and from a biblical perspective, and I said, quit misinterpreting. Jesus washed feet, so don't throw the Bible at me. Your job, the more of the leadership position that you're put in, the more you are a servant, not people serve you. So again, those that, that try to use that as a justification for trying to control someone in their behavior, understand what I'm just saying. That is actually abuse inside of your relationship. People that want to play mind games. You say something and they go, I never said that. You go, I know you said that. You guys know what I'm talking about. People just like to play the mind games with you like, you misinterpreted what I said. That ain't, that's, that's not what I said. That's exactly what you said. But they're trying to play the mind games and make you think that it's all about you. Again, if you're in a relationship for people that aren't willing to say they made mistakes, you know what, I was wrong, um, and willing to, 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 to step back and hear your perspective, that's an unhealthy relationship. That is an abusive relationship. People that aren't willing to, to, to be able to sit back and, and again, like I've talked about before, been in a relationship where we're willing to compromise. Again, I don't say sacrifice. You guys have heard me say, it, I don't believe in sacrificing in a relationship. Sacrificing is a win-lose situation. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Why, why is anybody losing in your relationship? It should always be a win-win. And I'm not saying win-win in the sense that we both give in to where when it's all said and done, we feel like we lost. That's not win-win. Win-win means we come up with an answer where we both get elevated by what took place. Okay, somebody does exclusion from, um, from decision-making. And this, again, goes along with the same thing we're talking about when I hear guys use that man thing. It's like... I'm the decision maker because I'm the man. 
You guys know I don't agree with that. The person that should be making the decisions based on is should be based on what situation are we dealing with. And depending on that situation, the person that's better equipped is the person that should be making the decisions. If my wife understands money, I need to shut up and I can ask her questions, but she need to be running the show. Why? Because she understands this. This is where her talents are. Why am I trying to make the decisions on where I'm weak at? That's not leadership. That's not wise. That's bad for the team to win when you got the wrong people. You got your center, which I know for those of you, everybody in basketball, but in basketball, you got some, some centers nowadays that can dribble, but I can tell you, if your center's always bringing the ball down, your team's in trouble because that ain't his job. You got guards that do that. And um, so if you put that person out of position, what they'll do is if your guard is always the one bringing down, they'll go put a guard on him and rip him all day, take the ball from him. You, you follow what I'm saying? So the key is you got to recognize what are your strengths and put people at their strengths. And I just used a basketball as an analogy, but that's just in life. You got to put the right people in the right place. And in your relationship, what makes you think it's any different? If your partner is more equipped for the, 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 the decision that we're making right now, be humble enough to sit back and go, you know what, honey? It's your turn. Why? This is where you shine. Let me learn from you. Follow me? Now, unfortunately, we're in a society where a guy that does that, a lot of people look at that as a beta guy, <laughs> which is silly to me. Or oh, alpha man wouldn't do that. He'd, he'd making the decision. Right. That means he's not a wise man if he's doing that. We misinterpret alpha. And again, I told you guys I'll do a video on that. But anyway, that's not what an alpha man does because an alpha man knows when to step back. Um, perfect example. I remember using basketball again. I remember um, when uh, this team, they had two guys that everybody calls alpha. And one of them realized the first year, everybody expected them to win the championship, and they didn't. But the next year, the guy said what changed their team is when he realized he needed to step back and let the other guy lead. Why? That doesn't stop him from being, quote, unquote, as we call an alpha dog. You guys follow me? Because a leader, which to me is the same thing, a leader understands sometimes I have to be humble enough to step back and let someone else lead. See, you can never be a good leader if you can't be a good follower. And that's what I think is the issue when I hear guys talk that man thing is because you don't, you, you're not humble enough to follow, which means you'll never be good enough to be a leader because a leader understands your job is to find out what the followers need and go make it happen. You guys follow me? So the more leadership position you're in, the more you're actually a servant. So anyway, let's not get... <laughs> get into that conversation again. But sometimes people will try to control access to money. That's how they'll try to control you. This is why for me, again, why I have a different philosophy when it comes to people saying a woman should stay home and the guy goes and makes the, makes the money. If that works for you, take it and run. But it's hard in the society in which we're in when divorce is at such a high rate. And because we're not in villages now where you just had the guys just go out and work and the women stay at home, that's that's not where we live. People are all spread out all over the place. And in and, 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 and most instances, there's a time in a woman's life where she has to support herself. Welcome to the real world. So why knowing that, that sometime, even if she was married and didn't work and, and, and he passed away... There's usually, there's going to be a time in her life where every woman is going to have to depend on herself. So why would I ever tell her to have that mentality of looking for someone to take care of you? You guys get me? Now, if you find it, take it and run. But I'm not going to teach that. Now, with that said, I've had uh, guys that, that, that want to argue that point, especially when they have a wife that stays at home and, and they go what that's what she's supposed to do and it's my job to take care of her and i go well i'm gonna open your eyes to a reality your wife probably has a job if she's cooking and cleaning at your house and you guys got kids her job is harder than what you do for a living but she's not getting paid wake up call she got a job 
you better recognize she got a job and quit trying to walk around like you the man. And, 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 and this again, where I'm saying the controlling of the access to the money, because some guys that's, that's their attitude is that she stays home, but then they want to control her by how much money they give her. Even though she got a job cleaning your house, cooking and take care of your kids. She got a job that she ain't being paid for, but he'll try to control her by how much he gives her, by her, by asking, what do you need it for? And this is the way he keeps her in check or him again, if that's the situation. But I'm just saying, if you got to get a partner that's trying to control you by access to money, we got some issues. Okay. I already uh, kind of mentioned the one about threat. If you got a person that, that likes to threat, uh, try to intimidate. Um, then again, these are relationships, these are abuses inside of relationships. Someone that blames you for everything, anything that goes wrong, or if you say something to them, well, even if they scream at you, it's your fault that I screamed at you. Because if you hadn't have done this, or you hadn't have said that, then I wouldn't have responded the way I did. So you created that. Folks, that is a person not willing to take responsibility for you. I can't make you do nothing. Anything that you do is by choice. Quit letting people put blame on you for their actions. And the other way around. Quit blaming others for your actions. You have to stand up and take responsibility for your decisions. So again, if you're in a relationship where the person blames you for everything, we need to go get some help or we need to get out of here. All these that I'm talking about are abuses. And that's why I'm saying, folks, if it's going on in your relationship, let's create a safe zone where we can talk and get this stuff resolved. Or let's go outside and get some help. Or I'm out of here. Again, I'm never, ever going to tell you to stay in a relationship where you're being abused mentally or physically. And then the last one, let's talk about this verbal abuse. Verbal abuse, again, is not necessarily the cussing, um, which we do that. But the verbal abuse can be when I've heard ladies tell me that they want a man that, that will put them in check. Really? Why do you need somebody to put you in check? What are you doing that you need someone to put you in check? That's a maturity conversation, uh, not a relationship issue. You got some issues that you believe you need somebody to put you in check. But if your partner is doing that, is verbally abusing you, which means they'll say certain things. That's why I say it doesn't have to be cussing, but just because their tone in front of others towards you is abuse in my eyes. Some people think that's cool. He checked me. That's my man. Have fun. Personally, I think it should never occur. Um, that's why people used to say all the time, they'd be like, I never seen you in arguments and fighting and stuff. I said, cause ain't none of your business. If I got a problem with my partner, we're going to talk about that in the house. Cause that's where it's supposed to get resolved. This is, this is not a public conversation. This is our personal conversation. We need to get this stuff resolved. So again, if you have a relationship where you guys can do this, cool. And if you don't go seek help. And if the person's not willing to get help, might be time to leave. So anyway, the eight that I talked about is shame, controlling behavior, mind games, exclusion from decision making, controlling access to money, using threats, blame, or verbal abuse. Any of that stuff going on in your house, any of it, let's get it addressed because those aren't healthy relationships. Anything that you're getting messed up mentally, will eventually destroy you physically. That's the reason that old saying, when they say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never harm you. One of the biggest lies ever shared because the sticks and stones, they can break your bones, but you can go to the hospital or stay home and get healed. But the emotional trauma is why most people never ever end up in the relationships they want in the, 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 what should I say? The, 
uh, I was going to say work or job or whatever, but whatever field it is that they want in life or just say life in general, they never, ever get to fulfill and live the life they truly want to live. And my objective here is to get you to understand, recognize these things. Don't take, don't listen to anybody telling you, no, it's, it's your mindset. That's just you. Because guess what? You have the right to believe and think the way that you do. And for you, it is the truth. And if you're in a relationship where somebody that's not willing to understand, my truth is my truth. Again, that is a form of abuse because you can't tell me how to feel. I feel the way I feel. You need to be open to hearing where I'm coming from. And let's work together as a unit. And let's eliminate any of these emotional abuses in our relationship. Because if you don't, a lot of these will actually end up leading to physical abuse. And even if the person never puts their hands on you, it will destroy you internally, which is another form of physical abuse. So as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. That's where I got all the different things I got going on. And for those of you that we talk on uh, Self Love Monday, I'll talk to you next Monday. And then for those of you on Relationship Thursday, we'll hear you back here next Monday. I mean, next Thursday. But again, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Do not allow any kind of abuse live inside of your relationships and especially if you're doing it to yourself <laughs> oh man that's real bad because folks as i've said before if you clean it up inside and get you done you won't allow anybody else to do it outside anyway and i'll talk to you guys soon take care bye-bye